Hi everyone, this is Brian Brinkman, and we wanted to take a second so that you guys could get to know the staff at REACH a little bit. Hi everyone, I'm Sarah Gothard. I am the program director at REACH Studio Arts Center. I get to work really closely with teaching artists and families and my wonderful colleagues to plan and implement exciting art programs for young people and adults and folks of all ages. Hi, I'm uh, Chris Russell. I am the cleaning and maintenance person at REACH, but I also am a teaching artist sometimes. Hi, I'm Danelle Brinker. I work as the program coordinator at REACH, and so I work really closely with Sarah, and we work together to make all the programs happen. And if you ever get to be in person at REACH, my favorite thing I get to do is meet you at the front door and get you situated for your, for your programs. Hi, everybody. I'm Alice. Brinkman, and I'm the founding executive director at Reef Studios. I'm not exactly sure how to describe what I do. I work at trying to keep the place running, I guess. <laughs> how did you discover that there was a need for a community art center? And what were some of the obstacles that you had in, in making that vision a reality? At the end of 2003, is is when I actually started REACH. In, in Lansing at the time, we had an art center, but it wasn't an art center with an educational space. I really felt like Lansing, the capital city of Michigan, needed to have a place for people to come and do art. Since I was doing a lot of volunteering and um, after school programming in the Lansing schools, kids just really responded to art. What were some of the biggest things that you had to overcome in order to get reach to where it is today? It took a few years before I got brave enough maybe to take that step. Or just kind of finding uh, somebody with, with a space that was affordable and that was also accessible because it, it was important to me to be, um, you know, close to uh, city neighborhoods. Do you have any specific experiences that helps you say, this is all worth it. Absolutely. <laughs> I have a lot of those. One term of our Creative Connections program, we, we did a puppet unit and we took um, a group of our Creative Connections kids to uh, an elementary school open house one evening. They had invited us to perform one of the puppet plays that the kids had created. So we got through the puppet play. It was a lot of fun. And we were walking outside to, to get back into our cars to go home. And um, this young lady blurted out, this was the best night of my life. <laughs> and the energy that was coming from her after she did her part in the puppet show uh, was just so valuable to me. What brings you joy? when it comes to reach and what you do? The greatest part is connecting with students and families. I mean, that is, even if it's just on the phone for two minutes, talking to a parent or seeing a young person coming in for class and getting to ask them about their day, what they're up to, how they're doing, how was their week? Uh, those are the things that I love the most. I mean, there's nothing better than just connecting with the people that love reach. It's part of my responsibility to facilitate like a space that feels welcome and where where people feel like they can belong and where they feel respected and seen and really cherished for showing up because it, it takes a lot of risk and it takes a lot of vulnerability to come out to a place you don't know where you think everyone's art's better than yours and um, especially for young folks, you know, it can be really daunting and really scary. The greatest joy is just holding the space and, and seeing it be utilized and full of life in the ways that it should be, which was what makes this time so difficult, <laughs> really hard. What got you into art education? Well, I've always been an artist um, since as long as I can remember. Um, and, you know, somewhere along the way, it just kind of became natural to also teach what you know. Teaching is the best way to learn. Art is essential to early development. Thinking, um, problem solving, that kind of stuff. Because um, art, art is always an open-ended question. So there's no answer that is correct. So it really causes the individual to rely on themselves to, to come up with the answer. And that leads to a kind of understanding of yourself. So art, I think, is a good vehicle 
for that kind of development. What are some ways that that you and, and REACH as well has tried to stay engaged and connected to the community during this time of isolation? We've been doing art pack distributions since the summer. We've been able to give so much just really awesome art materials to families. We've done this um, postcard exhibition in our gallery where people using their art materials have sent in drawings and all kinds of things on their postcards for us to display and people are always like yes we want more we'll, we'll we want this now in our art but we would be loved and that's something too that we're working on is like kind of now people's wish lists and what they're they're looking for besides what we put together in our, our initial art packs i've gotten to work with some of the caseworkers in the juvenile court system who reached out and were like, we really want to get these to our families. And, you know, Village Summit took a whole bunch of art packs. So it's exciting to, to know that people are using these and, and really want them and are excited to have that. What are some things that you're most looking forward to once we get back to Reach as it was? For me, Walk in Wednesday is like the heart of Reach. It's multi-generational. It's free. It's for everyone. It's our neighborhood, friends and neighbors just popping in and making things together and sitting next to someone who maybe you don't know that well. And like we have just like this all-star volunteer, Gloria, who comes every week to walk in Wednesday. Kids will just sit next to her and like, I it wouldn't surprise me if they're like coloring on her paper. To me, that's like just the energy of reach. I'm just like, we're here, we're doing this together. We're trying new things, we're learning new things. I really look forward to that probably most. And we'll really appreciate it really deeply appreciated, I think. All right, time for a speed round. What is your least favorite household chore? Dishes, easy, 100%. Dishes, dishes too. Vacuuming, dusting, everything. <laughs> What's your favorite household chore? Vacuuming, for sure. It's very satisfying. If you could domesticate any animal, what would it be and why? Velociraptor. Not the big Jurassic Park kind, because those are technically Utah raptors. Those are like six feet tall. I'm talking about the regular Velociraptors, like three feet tall, very manageable. Just one though, not like a whole pack, because that'd be ridiculous. Sarah, what animal would your four-year-old domesticate? She would just say unicorn. Janelle, if you were Santa Claus, what type of cookie or dessert would you want left out for you? It would be a donut, and it would be a, a custard-filled Donut with chocolate frosting. That is my favorite. Cream brulee. Chocolate chip. Chocolate chip cookies. Mac and cheese. <laughs> I'm not a dessert person. Macaroni and cheese <laughs> all the way. I'm going to need oh, fuel yeah. to get to the children of Earth. What music do you listen to to calm down? I like cello and violin music. Uh, Stevie Wonder, for sure. What music would you listen to right now to get amped? Oh, Lizzo. I would, I would listen to Lizzo. What? do you think is the scariest spot in Reach? Oh, it's the basement, for many reasons. Does everyone Thanks. agree? Unanimous. What is everyone's happy place at Reach? I mean, mine, mine is gonna be the Media Lab. Oh, I like the main classroom because that's where walk-in Wednesday happens uh, most often. I'm gonna say the performing arts space because uh, if I'm alone, I like to put on some music and dance in there. Oh, do you? <laughs> Is there any footage of that? When I'm alone. Number one item on your Christmas wish list this year? Pants. A radical change to sweeping human rights and dignity for every human on earth. I really want for people to be healthy and well and for families to stay safe. And then number two is cozy items like sweaters, blankets, all the comfort items. If we're going to be home for a while, get cozy. A finished bathroom. <laughs> I second that for you. <laughs> well, thanks, everyone. Happy holidays. Happy Bye, holidays. Everybody. Happy holidays. I'm going to include that, by the way. <laughs> okay, great. <laughs>